All right, good evening. This is Pastor Graham, Senior Pastor of Lighthouse Christian Center. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us on this platform, whether you are viewing live over Facebook or viewing after the fact on YouTube, whatever uh, device uh, you are, you're viewing this on. Thank you for connecting with us. Uh, it's always a privilege and honor to share with you God's living word. All right, give you a couple of announcements before we begin. We're back in the building. So this past Sunday, because of Hurricane Ian and all of the uh, things that came along with that, uh, schools were closed. As you know, we worship at Fort Dorchester High School and uh, we no activities would were allowed in their facilities. And so uh, we went virtual this past Sunday. Check it out on YouTube. Again, if you haven't subscribe to our YouTube channel, do so today, hit the notification uh, bell as well. So you are you are informed every time we upload a, a video that can help feed your faith. But we're back in the building all this week. So today we're virtual Thursday. We have our small group Bible study at 7 p.m. And on Sunday, we're back in the building in the auditorium, uh, 1030 a.m. Uh, live in-person worship experience. We also stream live over Facebook and wrap it around again to our Monday radio broadcast. So we have a lot of ways we, we look to uh, reach out to you. Uh, thank you for those who listen faithfully to our radio broadcast. Uh, Y'all's prayers and support mean a whole lot. If you want to give to our ministry, uh, you can go to our website at lighthousesc.org or you can give via cash app at cash tag LCC donate and you can mail it in to our mailing address which is also listed on our website as well thank you for your support thank you for your prayers thank you for those who call call in and get request cd orders as well and thank you for those who follow up and join us in person for worship we we love to see visitors we love to see people come in and say hey heard you on radio and so we thank god for that opportunity we do not take it for granted that we have um that platform to reach thousands with the gospel through radio this sunday we will have communion and we'll have children's church as well those of you who are connected to our ministry or who are full-fledged members you know that our children are preparing right now for their christmas program so bring your kids out uh sunday we have children's church every second sunday and so we look forward to that all right Let's get into the word of God. We'll go and uh, give a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you. We give you honor, glory, and thanksgiving. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We bless you and honor you. And we're asking you to open up our minds and understanding. Speak through me so those who are listening may be blessed. So God, give us revelation. Give us new insights so we can serve you more faithfully, love you more dearly, and follow you to the very end so for that we give you praise honor and glory we declare that we will be doers of your word and not hearers only we'll let our light shine so that those in darkness may see our good works and glorify you in heaven for that we give you the praise we give you the honor for those who are listening who are seeking and believing you for healing we stand in agreement with them that your healing power and virtue is flowing from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet we stand in agreement with them for their complete and total healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for those in Florida as well, those who have been impacted by the hurricane. Lord, meet their every need. Lord, help them to get back on their feet. Comfort those who lost loved ones. Be with them during this time. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. So we, we began a new series on change, and uh, we started it this past week. And tonight I want to talk about three steps to change, three steps to change. Now, this isn't, you know, <laughs> you know, AA uh, message, <laughs> Alcohol Anonymous, or, you know, and you may hear some things like that. Um, but I believe everything that they, in fact, I, I've had some people I ministered to who went to AA groups or just groups that help you to, uh, you know, make changes in your life. And a lot of the principles they share are biblical, they're biblical principles, um, whether they realize it or not, it came from the word of God. That's why it works. So tonight we're not talking about just changing our lives as it relates to alcohol, but changing our lives in every area that pertains to us. And so we want to talk about three steps to change. Now, it's been said that it's never too late to change. 
I agree. Uh, the question has been asked, can you teach an old dog new tricks? And that people have gone back and forth with that. And probably a more serious question is, do people really change? Do people really change? Or do they most often remain the same? You know, I, this question came up a whole lot when I was working in juvenile detention center and ministering to people who were uh, incarcerated. And the question always would come up, you know, can a person truly be rehabilitated to turn their life around, to go in a completely different direction? Now, as a pastor and minister of the gospel, I would have to say yes, because of the power of the gospel, because I honestly believe that when someone has an encounter with Jesus, their life is never the same. In fact, the Bible literally says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that when we get saved, when we give our heart and our life to Jesus, we are a brand new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so the whole dynamic behind salvation indicates to us that we can change. You can be one person, one moment, and someone else the next, because the change that takes place in our lives via salvation takes place on the inside of us in our spirit. We are a brand new person in Jesus. And so the Bible says that a person can change. So we gotta go with that. That when you expose someone to the gospel, when you expose someone to Christ, their life is never the same. In addition, um, I believe, when we spend time in God's presence, you can't remain the same. Okay, maybe that's our problem. We, we have um, a lot of church, but we don't really have God's presence. Maybe we have a lot of programs, but not a lot of presence of God. And maybe that's why we go to church Sunday after Sunday, week after week, and our lives remain the same. So a person can change according to the Bible. And so we wanna talk about three steps to change. Now, we, we referenced that, you know, obviously when someone gets saved, their life changes, but, you know, we also need to make some changes after we give our life to Christ. You know, it's just like uh, when you get married, when, you, when you're married, your life immediately changes. It's not just you anymore. Can't just think for yourself. You can't think like a single person. You have to, you know, you, your, your pronouns change. I tell people that that you go from uh, I and me to now us and we, you know, you're 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 in a totally you're in a totally different setting here with marriage. However, after you say I do, all those things have changed. That's that's a major life event. Even even the IRS recognizes <laughs> you know that you've changed. Your insurance company uh, recognizes that you have went through a change. But we know even after you get married, you still have to make some changes. You still have to do things differently if your marriage is gonna last, if it's gonna work. In a similar sense, even after you get saved, there's still a lot of changes we need to make. Yes, we're born again. Yes, you may be filled with the spirit. We're heaven bound, but we still have to make a lot of changes in our lives so we can continue to be conformed to the image of God's son. The Bible says even after we get saved, we are supposed to still work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Even after we get saved, we have to learn how to renew our mind in the word of God so we won't conform to the world or today's culture. Um, you can be a, a Christian, but be a carnal Christian. You can be a Christian and follow the ways and the patterns of this world. And so there's still a lot of things that need to be done. You know, salvation is both instant and progressive. And so after we give our life to Christ, we still have to make changes within our lives. So we're going to talk about three steps to change. Number one, we have to first acknowledge that change needs to be made in our lives. Uh, again, we have to acknowledge that a change needs to be made in our lives. This reminds me of the prodigal son. The Bible says that, um, you know, he spent his inheritance he, he, he spent it foolishly and he found himself in poverty, feeding among swine. And then he just, the Bible said he came to himself, the light went on and he realized and acknowledged that I need to make a change. This is not where I need to be. My father's servants live better than I do. Um, this is not what God has for my life. 
Now, I found that acknowledging that a change needs to be made in your life can be the most difficult step because you essentially have to admit to yourself that you made a mistake or that you were wrong. And a lot of times that's hard for us to do. However, there is something special about an individual who can admit that they're wrong. There's something special and it's wise to be able to admit that you're going in the wrong direction. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you're traveling someplace on a road trip, on vacation, and then you realize um, I'm going in the wrong direction. And I don't know if you've ever been there before, but I, I have been. <laughs> and so I messed up GPS, uh, GPS. I, I wasn't following it right. I, I plugged it in wrong or I made uh, a left and I was supposed to make a right. And you know what? We're not, we're not in the right place. And, and this, will, this one was on me. And so, you know, as a, as a child of God, even after we get saved, we, we have to admit when we're wrong, we have to admit that, you know, I need to make some changes in my life. I remember there was an area in my life and I said, you know what, I, I can't keep doing this. I need to make some changes. I need to find out what the word says. I need to, you know, make sure my life is conforming to God's word, opposed to what, what I'm seeing happening in my life. You know, there are always signs, there's indicators that something is out of order, something is not right. Sometimes God will confront us with some things. Sometimes God will convict us with our conscience. And that's what absolutely has to happen. Um, but this can be a difficult because we have to swallow our pride and admit that, you know, I, I need to make a change. This is why I believe God used David so mightily. He was known after a man, uh, as a man after God's own heart. He wasn't perfect, uh, but he would acknowledge, you know, when he made a mistake and when he needed to make a change. And that's all God is asking for. God, God knows everyone isn't perfect. He, he knows we're not perfect. He knows we're going to make mistakes. But we have to be able to acknowledge when we need to change. We have to admit when something isn't working. We have to admit when we have made a mistake, when we're at fault. We have to admit that, you know, I'm not getting it done. I'm, something I'm doing is, is it's just not working. Um, I'm doing something that's counterproductive to my progress in life and in my walk with God. So, and again, it's, it's hard to do, it's hard to swallow your pride, but we will never change until we acknowledge that something is not right, something is out of order. I'm not where I need to be in my walk with God. I'm not where I need to be in life. And so, you know, I gotta look in the mirror and see what responsibility do I bear with what's happening in my life, the prodigal son, he admitted that he was wrong. And he said that father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. You know, he even went as far as saying, I'm not, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. You know, that, that took a lot of humility. It really did. But look how things turned around for him so quickly. Things happened for him. You can argue supernaturally. God really came and gave him favor, restored him back to where he was with his father. They, 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 they uh, had a, a feast and a party for him, they, a celebration when he came back. And it all happened because he was willing, willing to admit that he needed to make a change. He was willing to acknowledge, I messed up. I find in this day and age, that's, that's hard to, to find in people, even Christians, even those in the ministry, because we just don't want to admit that we're wrong. Um, we, we struggle with pride. Pride is a silent killer. And so how can we ever ascend to where God wants us to be if we won't acknowledge when we're off, when we're wrong, when we need to make a change? It takes, it takes a, a strong individual. It takes a real adult <laughs> to be able to admit that, you know what, I need to make a change in my life. This is not working <laughs> for me. And so that's, that's step number one, acknowledge that a change needs to be made. Step number two is repent, okay? What is repentance? Well, when you, when you look it up in the dictionary, repentance just simply means to have uh, remorse or sorrow over your sin, over what you have done. Um, it's, it's a feeling of regret. And I would, I would argue that there is no repentance if there's no remorse. There is no repentance if there's no kind of regret of what you've done wrong that was wrong you know it has to bother you first of all that you missed the mark and again in this day and age 
I don't know. We 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 were so callous. Bible calls it a seared conscious conscience, even with believers, mind you. Where we sin, we don't feel anything. We keep right on going. You know, we our, our conscience, our heart isn't tender toward God. And so I would say that there is less repentance now than there was in the body of Christ, you know, years ago, because I, I don't want to say we don't care, but I don't know what it is. You know, we, we're in a different society, a different kind of culture. I think we we try, we the world I know has this mindset, you know, you can do wrong, just don't get caught. If, unfortunately, the church in some instances has embraced that mindset. And that's totally wrong, totally antithetical to what the, the Bible teaches. Even some of our apologies aren't even sincere. <laughs> you know, I, we, we've seen it, you know, with leaders and, and sometimes people in ministry, you know, our, our apologies sometimes are so scripted that you wonder if we really get the point. And so if, if we're going to repent, there has to be sorrow. There has to be remorse. I, I read an article recently about, you know, something that took place in ministry and some people were arguing that, you know, someone did something wrong. They apologized. And it was a one-sided apology because you never were able, was able to hear the other person's story, you know? And a lot of times, not just, you know, not just with churches and church leaders, but sometimes even in politics or in just, you know, in the world of business and work, Sometimes our apologies are so scripted and so planned uh, because you don't want to incriminate yourself. And so sometimes we never really embrace a full sense of repentance. And if we don't repent, we will never change because repentance involves having remorse. Repentance involves having sorrow for what you've done wrong. And at the end of the day, repentance means to change. It means to change. So if we've repented and did not change, then what good was it? And so, you know, with the second step to change, we really have to repent. There must be remorse. There must be some sorrow. There has to be something in, in your life with your current behavior that bothers you, that impacts your life in a way that you say, I cannot continue doing this. There, there must be some kind of conviction there that you said, I cannot do this again. And unless we have that, unless there's a conviction, unless it impacts our life in a certain way, or we realize it, how it can impact our life, our faith, our family, and our future, unless there's remorse, unless there's sorrow, we will never change. And we will never realize or, or walk in true Bible repentance. And so change starts with us repenting and acknowledging, hey, I missed the mark. I can no longer continue to do. And I'm telling you, it's easier said than done. Because it takes a really a, a man of humility, a woman of humility to truly repent from what the Bible calls is biblical repentance. And I'm telling you, a lot of times, even among Christians, it can be very rare. <laughs> it can be very rare. And, and that's very unfortunate because that's kind of what the world does. We live in a very litigious society. And so like, I'm not admitting anything. I'm going to, I'm going to lawyer up and, you know, I get it in some instances, but when it comes to God, you know, there's no covering anything up. When it comes to God, we have to be open and transparent about what we've done wrong. And in some instances, we have to be that same way with people as well. So I think this is one instance where the culture has influenced the church versus the church influencing the culture. Even the Bible says when we're honest and open about our sin, we will gain mercy from God. And a lot of times we've gained mercy and compassion from people as well. I was looking at a, a story uh, the other day and a guy, he committed a crime. He, he, he was involved with something that was heinous and um, he earned the respect of the police officers and say, hey, listen, I'm in a bind. He had some things going on. He, he didn't need help, but he said, I realize I did some things wrong. I'm ready to take responsibility for my actions. And the police officer was like, wow, okay, all right. He said, what I did was wrong. He said, should have never happened. He felt bad about it because he made a mistake and has got his, he got his brother killed. And he felt off as he should. 
And because he had that remorse, he had that sorrow, he had that regret. He said, now I'm ready to repent. Now I'm ready to own my mistakes. I'm ready to take responsibility for what I've done wrong. That was special. And he had to suffer some consequences, but I don't think it was what he would have if he tried just to get out of it. And so God can work with someone like that. So if we're going to change, step number two is we have to repent. The Bible says in Acts chapter three, verse 19, it says, repent, therefore, and be converted. See, you can't be converted. You can't change until you repent. And I love the last part of this verse. He said, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins will be blotted out. So that's a whole different scenario here. He said, number one, repent to change. Okay, repent first on your mistakes. Have that sense of remorse, sorrow. Um, I'm ready to make a change. He said, then you'll be converted. Then you'll see a transformation in your life. And he said, throughout that process, I'm also going to wipe your sins away. I'm going to forgive you. And we know the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that if you confess your sins before God, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness like you never did it before at all. And so he says that your sins may be blotted out. Repent, number one, be converted. Number three, your sins will be brought, blotted out. Then he says times of refreshing will come from being in the presence of God. So God refreshes us. He restores us uh, as we are in his presence. You know, he makes us to a brand new person. Not to say that they're not consequences, but we will be in right standing with God when we take this approach. So number one, we need to acknowledge that a change needs to be made in our lives. I can't stress that enough. That can be the most difficult thing because <laughs> it's so easy just to keep doing things the way you've been doing things. Number two, we have to repent. And number three, uh, we have to obey God's word. You have to obey the word of God. In other words, we need to do what is right. We, we, we need to do the right thing. Do what is right for our, our lives, our, our health, our faith, our future, our family. Do the right thing. Okay, do what the word says. And we know some things are hard to do. Okay, not easy. We, we talked about how those in AA meetings or, you know, alcoholics or those who are struggling and addicted to drugs or any kind of addiction for that matter. Um, you know, when they go through that process, it's not an easy process. They, they are told up front, it's going to take a lot of work. And that's even, you know, for some people who don't have the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell you, even with the power of the Spirit, it's still going to take work, but the Holy Spirit will enable us. He will help us. You know, when you're driving, you know, you, you, you still got to turn the wheel yourself. The car isn't going to turn itself. But when you have power steering, it's a little easier. I don't know if you ever had an experience driving a car that didn't have, did not have power steering. You can turn the wheel, but it's a whole lot harder if you don't have that power assist or that power steering. And so the Holy Spirit is like power steering. He will help you make those changes. He will help you make those turns in life. Um, it's going to be work, but he'll make it a little easier because he'll be there to strengthen you. And so we have to obey God's word and the Holy Spirit will help us to do so. Obeying God's word is a choice. You know, we, we, we have to make a conscious, willful choice to do what God wants me to do, to do what is right, because the Bible, the law of God is right. And so that's what we have to do. You got to be intentional and we have to, you know, like Nike, just do it. Do what God's word says. You know, the prodigal son, we, we talked about him. We talked about David as well. David obeyed God when he missed the mark. He made changes in his life. Uh, prodigal son, he, he, he did what, was, what he was supposed to do. He said, I'm going to go back. I'm willing to go back to work. Father, just make me a servant. The apostle Paul, you know, he, he had to turn his life around. He, he went through a drastic change in his life. He started to obey God because first part of his life, he was disobeying God. At the end of the day, it comes down to obedience. And the obedience, obeying God, will catapult us into the future God has for our lives. It will catapult us into a new place in our walk with God. It's all about obedience. We can sing, dance, shout, run around the church. We can talk at length about, you know, good ideas. It all comes down to obedience. 
<laughs> it, it all comes down to obedience, obeying God as it pertains to our lives. And nothing, uh, nothing can replace or take the place of obeying God. Nothing. Even the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. Well, I'm going to go to church, you know, nine days a week. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go to church you know, as much as I can. If even when my church isn't open, I'm going to go to somebody else's church. All right, that's good. Okay, you can make that sacrifice. Um, but just make sure on a daily basis you're obeying God. He said you can make all these extra sacrifices and, and do this, that, and the other, and third. Uh, but just make sure you're consistently obeying God every single day. Nothing takes the place of obedience. And ultimately, when we obey God, we will change and be conformed into the image of his son. So we said it's a choice. I'm reminded of what Moses said in the Old Testament to the children of Israel. He said, hey, I set before you death and life, uh, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. He said, obey God. And it's going to work out in your favor. Obey God and you see all kinds of changes take place in your life and in the lives of your descendants. Man, let me tell you what, my life completely changed when I started to obey God. I'm a brand new person. Not the same person I used to be, but I started to obey God as it relates to my life. And, and that's, this is the faith part, by the way. You know, we can quote scriptures, shout, run, dance. This is the faith part. Faith is action. And so if we're really gonna make significant changes, we have to start obeying God, doing what the word says, doing what is right. We can't just talk a good game. We got, we have to do what is, you know, it's kind of like, you know, um, you know, example, everyone can relate to, you know, you don't want to make a change in your life. And we, we, we were joking around about this with our Sunday online service, you know, just losing weight. Okay. Um, number one, you got to acknowledge, all right, I need to lose weight. Number two, shoot, this ain't right. I, I'm just, I'm convicted and I'm convinced that this isn't the life I need to live, not healthy for me, you know? And so now I got to start doing some things, okay? By the help of the Holy Spirit, got to start doing some things. Whether it's exercising, you know, diet, uh, whatever the case may be, um, I got to start doing some things. This is the faith part because God can do everything he's going to do, but if you don't do it and we don't do our part, nothing's going to get done. Bible says faith without works is dead don't seem fair but that's just the way it is you know there has to be some corresponding action on our part um it's not all god and it's not all you but but you know together we got to get this thing done we're in partnership with god <laughs> so god has done his part now the ball is in our court there's some things we have to do hey i gotta quit lying okay so i realize i'm a liar okay i am a liar just i don't just embellish the truth i don't tell little white lies i just no i'm a liar you know, as an example. <laughs> and so, you know, you get to a point where you're convicted, there's remorse. Like, I see how this is messing up my life. It's, it's ruining all my relationships. People have caught me in lies. I'm, I'm making up one lie to cover up the last one. And it's impacting my employment. Perhaps you're lying and then you got caught. And so you get fired. Uh, it's damaging your relationship. Kids don't trust you anymore. Marriage is broken because you're just being dishonest. Okay, IRS caught up with you. Now it's affecting your finances. And so now I have to obey God. The Bible says all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. Can't lie anymore. The Bible says speak the truth in love. The Bible says seven things, six things that God hates. Even seven are an abomination to him. He said he can't stand a lying tongue. So I, I, I have to embrace that. I got to obey God. God tells me in his word not to lie. So I got to be honest. So now I'm going to start obeying God's word. Now I'm going to start doing the right thing. Now I'm going to start walking in integrity and being honest because this is what God wants me to do. And now my life starts to change. And that's how change takes place. Acknowledge that I've done wrong. Acknowledge that I need to make a change. I'm convicted. I repent. And I'm going to start doing what I am supposed to be doing. And that's how we change. So I thought about, I'll say this and wrap it up, you know, the most significant changes that have taken place in my life after the initial change of salvation, because we all change once we get saved again, we're new creatures in Christ. And I mean, I've, 
I made some significant, I mean, I got saved and I got filled with the spirit. I was a significant change, you know, uh, embrace the call of ministry. But I tell you what, just even recently, I've made a lot of uh, changes. And I noticed that I had to go through these three steps. I had to acknowledge, like, I need to do something different. <laughs> I, I need to make a change. Um, what I've been doing is not working. I got to make a change. Then I went down to step number two. Well, I repent. I'm convicted. I'm, 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 I'm remorseful. I'm, in some instances, agitated, upset, you know, at some things that have been taking place in my life. And number three, now it's time to rise up in faith. To overcome my fears, to overcome, you know, the pushback I might get from other people or how hard it may be. I need to do what God wants me to do. I need to obey the word in this particular area. I need to follow the Lord for what he's telling me to do. I need to do what I know is the right thing to do. Wow. Then I sense myself changing, becoming a person I've never been before. And that's ultimately what God wants from all of us. I remember the Old Testament with King Saul. The Bible said the spirit of God came upon him and he was like a brand new man, <laughs> a brand new man. They didn't even recognize him. You know, the Bible says we're changed from faith to faith and from glory to glory, even by the spirit of God. So as we mature in our walk with God, we should be making significant changes, hey, throughout our lives, growing, maturing. Hey, Paul says, when I became a man, I put away childish things. I, I continued to grow. I continue to put away things that did not belong in my life. I continued to have a sense of spiritual awareness that this is something I don't need to do anymore. These are relationships I don't need to connect with anymore. These are habits, idiosyncrasies I don't need to uh, practice anymore. And so we make these changes until we're fully conforming to the image of God's son. And this is something that takes place until we go be with the Lord. Got to make changes in our lives. Those are three steps that will get you there. Let's pray. Father, we bless you and we praise you. Give you honor, glory, and thanksgiving. Help us, Lord, to make significant changes in our lives. Help us to acknowledge that we need to make a change. Help us to have the humility to repent and the spiritual stamina and courage to repent. Help us to be embrace the conviction that you may be sending our way. And Lord, help us to, to live by faith, walk by faith, and do what your word is telling us to do. God, for that, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone connecting, either Facebook, YouTube, okay, uh, Zoom, whatever. Share, like, and, and, and let people know about what we're doing here at LCC. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. Hope to see you guys Thursday and Sunday. God bless. Amen.